Hi, I'm Nick Bonner for treestuff.com and we're gonna look at a couple different lanyard options, talk about some of the differences in how you would configure some of these options because online, you know, you go on the website, there's like a lot. If I say a hundred, someone on YouTube will say there's not a hundred, but there's a lot of different lanyard configurations. And when you start talking about whether or not to use a Prusik or a mechanical adjuster, what kind of pulley you're gonna use, uh, it really starts to get out. We aren't gonna discuss uh, some of the fancier adjusters today. We'll save those for a different video. So if you're looking for the ART adjuster, or the Zillion or Xeon, uh, those things are not in today's video. But here you're gonna see uh, a very basic setup. This is my preferred setup. Uh, I've got a Rapstar hitch right here, Sterling Tri-Tech, which uh, I firmly believe is the best lanyard material out there. It's extremely durable. It offers a minor amount of cut resistance uh, that to me just transfers into uh, really long lasting durability. So you've got an ISC triple action snap here. Uh, again, we're coming to a very simple pulley. This just happens to be the notch one. Any pulley really will work here. Uh, you know, until you start adding extra holes, I don't know that there's a lot of benefit between switching between the different pulleys, but you know, this one's cheap and it works really well. So here I am D to D. Obviously, you know, these lanyards can be used to the lower Ds as well. Uh, and all of them are gonna kinda, you know, be able to do this. So I won't demonstrate that necessarily with all of them. So, you know, this is again, like, going to be your most basic lanyard setup, right? It's going to be terminated in some way to this, uh, whether it's open or closed, or, you know, even maybe simply with a double fisherman's knot there. Um, there's a ton of different other types. You know, you can look at what's called a double-ended adjustable. And this, at first glance, is going to look really similar to the lanyard that I just showed you, except one of the big differences is I've tied a bi-directional knot here. So on here, I have a VT or a Val de uh braids and twists. And you know, this is only going to work in one direction, whereas this one's going to work in either. So what that gives you is it allows you to turn this lanyard into a double ended adjustable. And I could have done it with that smaller one, but it's going to work better with this longer one here. And so here, you know, I could say I'm lanyarded in here. I can take the tail of this lanyard and come around here and then use it to clip in. And now I have a second point of safety attachment. However, because I'm using a pulley here, if this one wasn't on and I were to, even if I had this nice and tight, if I were to fall, you see, it's just gonna run out, right? Now that's okay, kind of, in that, you know, I would have taken a fall, but I am still protected. So you will see a lot of people go ahead and while they're switched in, you'll see them. So they'll be tied in here like this. They'll come up nice and tight. They're nice and secure. And let's say they need to switch over to this limb. They'll take this one and put it here as kind of that backup safety, right? And then from a positive stance, you'll see people come in like this, right? And move this lanyard around until it gets over here and then wade into it, knowing that had they fallen, this one would have saved them. Is that appropriate for every condition? No, it isn't. Uh, you as a climber need to make a decision as to whether or not you can use a double-ended adjustable lanyard in that fashion. However, if you're ever unsure and you feel like you need both legs of that to run, you can simply remove the pulley. And because we're using a bi-directional Prusik, it's gonna work in both directions and it won't run because of that pulley. So that's another option. You don't need to use Tri-Tech to do this. You don't have to have splice dies or snaps. You know, you can make one of these with a Prusik uh, and a piece of rope with knots in it and carabiners. So a uh, great option. I started climbing on a double-ended adjustable lanyard. It really made sense to me and it gave me a lot of options before I knew how to integrate back and forth between my climbing system and my lanyard which isn't something that we're demonstrating here today. As you start to look away from cloth lanyards uh, and towards more mechanical things, here I'm gonna show you two new uh, things, two different things. So this is a steel or wire core lanyard. Um, these are not chainsaw proof. They are cut resistant. Uh, I don't think that you can cut through one of these with a handsaw in a reasonable real life scenario. Uh, so for me personally, I feel pretty comfortable using my handsaw around one of these. Um, but you absolutely can cut through this with a trim saw. So 
you know, you can watch all the YouTube videos that you want that say you can or you can't. I'm telling you right now that you can cut through this with even a small trim saw. So these are not chainsaw proof, but right away you'll see that the wire does offer more than just cut resistance and that it offers a certain amount of rigidity. This can be really nice when you're flipping up on spurs and you need to push that lanyard up. So you see that works really well right there and it doesn't suffer from moisture or from like, you know, just the general floppiness that regular rope does. Uh, in a lot of other ways, this is gonna work just like a regular lanyard. You see this one here has a swiveling snap hook on it. Um, I definitely recommend a swivel when you're using a steel cable uh, inside of the lanyard. It doesn't have the same rotation that rope does and this will just make it a lot easier. On this side, you see I've switched to a mechanical adjuster, which I cannot pay out under load. So that's no noticeable difference between using a Prusik. However, when I go to slack it out, it does work really well um, when I'm not weighted and it does ascend nice and smooth and there's very little setback with this. The only setback you're really gonna see is the amount of this pivoting action, whereas with a Prusik, it tends to be a little bit more. You can absolutely use one of these steel core lanyards with a Prusik if you choose to, uh, and it'll work just like the first lanyard that I showed. Um, you know, and you could even use one of these as a double end adjustable lanyard if you wanted to. So these come in a lot of different lengths. The rope logic ones, I think are by far and above the best. You know, you do see failures associated with old age and a lack of, uh, a lack of uh, people replacing them with some of the other brands. We've never had a failure uh, with one of these ever. Uh, it's because we don't just like swage the cable in there. The cable and the load supporting jacket are both held underneath this swage. So you have redundancy because the jacket and the cable are both strong enough for you. Uh, and you've never seen one of these fail and I don't think you ever will. So uh, if you're gonna get a steel core lanyard, absolutely get a rope logic one. Uh, the other brands might be a little cheaper or you might find them at more stores or something like that. But uh, these are absolutely the best and certainly the safest. Um, you just, you see too many pictures of those orange ones failing. Uh, definitely really like this. Um, if you work in a standards rich environment, um, you know, or you have, uh, you need something that meets every standard associated depending on your industry or your employer. We also sell this, this is called the Azua. So that is ANSI underwriter laboratory approved or listed, right? Uh, this meets every relevant US certification. It's made out of 9 16th rope. It has a stitch. It comes with a, a big snap here, which is an ANSI rated snap um, or ANSI. It's a snap that meets the ANSI ratings, excuse me, ANSI doesn't rate things, so I try to avoid saying ANSI rated, but it meets the ANSI ratings. And then also over here, you're gonna notice the carabiner has a 3,600 pound gate, uh, which also meets the ANSI requirements. So this lanyard comes complete with everything that you need to meet every US standard, regardless of what kind of industry you're in, I think, uh, that requires a work positioning or fall restraint lanyard. So, you know, if you work in a, in a place where something like this is required, I think this is a great choice. Uh, it might not be my first choice necessarily as a lanyard, uh, but it definitely is a good choice if it's something that's required. I hope that uh, this video was helpful for you guys in determining which lanyard might be right for you. I always recommend people start with something simple, you know, a double-ended adjustable lanyard like this uh, will never be a bad place for someone to start. All of the components that go into it are gonna be able to evolve as you decide to go towards something that's maybe a little sportier with a VT hitch or something like this that's unidirectional. Or if you decide you wanna add a mechanical adjuster of any type, you know, those can all be added to these smaller ropes. Uh, Sterling Tritec, I think is a great choice, especially for beginners. Uh, if they do nick it with their handsaw, you know, it's gonna be more resistant to that and, you know, uh, definitely a safer option. So uh, check all these lanyards out. This and everything we sell at treestuff.com is always available for 5% off with the discount code Arborist. Thanks for watching.